All right, so there are a couple lessons in Chapter 9 that are really important uh, to going on to higher levels of math, and this is another one. Uh, special right triangles was important, and trigonometric ratios is important because you're going to build on this uh, in your next uh, two classes. So trigonometric, trig is a triangle, and metric is measure, so this is about triangle measure, and we're talking about trigonometric ratios. So couple things. Um, the adjacent and the opposite sides depend on the angle that you're talking about. So if we're talking about angle A, then this side over here is the side that's opposite of angle A. And this side here is the side that's adjacent. The hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. That's across from the 90 degree angle. It's the longest side. So that's never going to be adjacent or opposite. So you have to just remember that. It's always hypotenuse. Now if I'm up here and I talk about angle B, then this side would be adjacent and this side would be opposite. So we need to take that into consideration which angle that we're looking at. Now, excuse me, you need to memorize these three ratios right here. So sine, the sine of an angle, uh, we abbreviate that uh, S-I-N, but it's uh, that's the word sine here. We just drop the E and cosine, we drop that. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, that would be uh, A over C. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be B over A in this example. And the tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now, <clears throat> we have a mnemonic device to help us memorize that. And it's so ka toa So, ka toa so it sounds a little bit funny, but uh, that really can help you memorize this. So so means that the sine of an angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse so, and there you can see the ka, and here you can see the toa. Okay, so I'm going to use that uh, to, and you want to start trying to memorize that right now. So if you can cover that up and in your head. So we're going to do this for the big and the little triangle. It says compare them. Um, so. I'm going to do the uh, big triangle in uh, blue and the small triangle in red. Okay, so for the sine of A, sine is so, so, and so means sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So angle A is right here, opposite is 5, hypotenuse is 13, so that's 5 over 13. Okay, now if we do cosine, I'll just do all the, the blue triangle first, then I'll switch to that smaller triangle. So cosine, that's ka. So in your head when you see this, you should think of so, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And when you see this, you should think of ka, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is 12, so that's going to be 12 over 13. And then finally here, tangent, that's toa opposite over adjacent. So opposite over adjacent is 5 over 12. Now let's try that again and if you do this every time on the notes in the assignment uh, you should uh, have these memorized by the end of that. So sine is so, so is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse that's 2.5 over 6.5. Ka is Cosine is ka. Ka is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's going to be 6 over 6.5. And finally, tangent. Tangent is toa. That's opposite over adjacent. So that's 2.5 over 6. So what we want you to realize here is that if we double all these, these are equivalent. And so this is where trigonometry is helpful, is that... Uh, for any triangle when the sides are proportional like that, the sine, cosine, and tangents will always, these ratios will always be equal. Okay? And so they use that a lot in uh, surveying and construction and different things like that. Okay, so let's uh, try this down here. So one of the things we want to make sure we do is when we're doing these ratios, we want to make sure we reduce. Now, those don't reduce. And here, normally, we wouldn't leave decimals in a fraction, so we would probably double all those to get these ratios over here. 
All right, so again, we're practicing sine. So the sine of uh, D is uh, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite is 14 and the hypotenuse is 50. So that's going to be 14 over 50, which reduces to 7 over 25. All right. Notice here we had a Pythagorean triple. Okay. We mentioned those, they show up a lot, so it's really good to be familiar with those where all the sides are integers. Okay, back to this one, uh, and these three sides are integers as well, and it looks like. Let's see. So anyway, uh, let's go on to cosine. So cosine is ka. Ka is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be 48 over 50. So that's 24. So that's another Pythagorean triple, but that's a little bit less common. Uh, 7, 24, and 25. And finally, tangent. Tangent's opposite over adjacent. So that's going to be 14 over 48. So that's going to be 7 over 24. So you want to make sure on a test that you're using these reduced numbers here. That's kind of important. Okay. And now if we switch over to angle E, that's going to change our perspective. So we're going to be looking from a different point of view now. So now sine, that's still opposite over hypotenuse, but now our opposite is this side because we're talking about angle E. So that's going to be 48 over 50, which is 24 over 25. So what we want to notice there maybe is that um, these two uh, match up, which should make sense because the um, adjacent side for D is the opposite side for E, and they're both over the hypotenuse. So that's going to work out. Now cosine is ka. Ka is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be 14 over 50, which is 7 over 25, which matches up here, and for the same reason. So you don't have to memorize that, that just can, can be a helpful thing, maybe it's not. But And now tangent, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so now it should be, maybe if you think about it, um, the opposite and adjacent of this are the reciprocal of the opposite and adjacent of that. So it's just that flipped over. So, but anyway, these can be divided by 2. So that's 24 over 7. So we see how these are uh, reciprocals. All right. All right, so as we look at this next triangle, this is actually a special case uh, and to uh, memorize these values, but um, we just have it in here so that you can see it. So you should notice that these two uh, sides are equal, so it's a right isosceles triangle, and hopefully you see the relationship there from our earlier lesson. But So we know that these two angles are equal. It's isosceles, two equal sides, two equal angles, and uh, the... These two angles are 45 degrees each. So if we look at the sine of angle A, what we're really asking is what's the sine of 45 degrees, because A is 45 degrees. So if we look at the sine of A, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that would be 18 over 18 root 2. So that's going to reduce to 1 over root 2, and then we would rationalize the denominator, which we've talked about before. So that's going to be root 2 over 2. So we could just memorize that. The sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. Now that's not going to be a big deal in our class, but uh, it will be later on. Okay, and if we move over to the cosine of 45, well, the nice thing about that is that because it's isosceles, the opposite and the adjacent sides are equal. So that's also going to be 18 over 18 root 2. And then we should just realize that that is going to be the same. Okay. And finally, the tangent of 45 degrees is opposite over adjacent. 
And so those are all really nice uh, values. So we can hopefully kind of memorize those uh, three. So if we move on, maybe you can speculate uh, what type of triangle we're going to look at next. And as you look at that triangle over there, you should have an idea of uh, what it is. So let me use the same colors I did over there. So. Um, So you could be working on that, uh, pause, whatever. So here, angle A, that is the, so if you see the relationship here, this uh, longer leg is 5 root 3, it's that side times root 3, and the hypotenuse is double. So that makes this a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So here we can look at the sine of 30 degrees and sine is opposite over adjacent so that's going to be 5 over 10 so the sine of 30 is 1 half it's always 1 half so we could memorize that the sine of 30 is 1 half and now the cosine of 30 okay cosine is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse so that's going to be 5 root 3 over 10 which reduces to root 3 over 2. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we're going to get the tangent of 30 degrees is 5 over 5 root 3. And that's 1. And rationalize again. So that's going to be root 3 over 3. So eventually, if you want to start memorizing those, that would be uh, good for you. Okay. Now, to do this on your uh, calculator, you can go to your phone. And on your phone, you should have a calculator. And when you click that, it kind of looks like this. And if you turn it sideways, you should get okay, a scientific calculator. And so what we want to do here is the, we're asked to approximate the values of these three things. So the sine of 82 degrees is approximately. So if we do that on the calculator, if we look for a sine down here, here's sine. And we want to make sure we're in degrees, uh, and we are in degrees. There's some other things called radians, which we'll learn about next year. So if I hit radians, then it says radians up there. I don't want that. I want degrees. So by hitting degrees, it switches it to degrees. So you probably didn't have to do anything. It was probably in degrees already. So we're just going to type uh, 82, and then we're going to hit the sine of that. And so that's going to be 0 0.9903. Uh, okay. And now we're going to do the cosine of 82. And if we uh, clear this and we type 82 again and hit cosine, we get uh, 0 0.139. Uh, and actually, we usually just go to three decimal places in honors math classes because that's what we do in AP Calculus. But uh, so that would have been good. And then the last one is the tangent of 82 degrees. So now we're going to clear that, type 82, and hit tangent. Now if you have a scientific calculator, especially if it's got the two rows on top, which is really nice, um, you may actually, so some calculators are actually going to hit sine first and then type 82 and equals. So uh, that's something to consider there. All right. Anything else about that? So we're not going to ask you stuff. Uh, so normally in class we don't use the calculators in honors geometry. Um, but for your textbook, in order to check some of your answers or maybe on the um, uh, Alex, they might have you do that. Now if we think about this for a second, let's think about sine and cosine and these values that we're going to get for that. So if you think about it, sine and cosine are always over the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is always the longest side. So we're always going to be putting a number that's less than the hypotenuse over it. And so if you think about it, um, that these values for both of these are always going to be greater than zero, because you can't have a negative side in there, but they're always going to be less than a certain number. 
and hopefully you can think about what that number would be since we're putting smaller numbers over a bigger number they're always going to be less than one so that uh, can be a little bit helpful to be aware of that okay and moving right along um, these questions uh, give students uh, a little bit of a hard time sometimes in class and on tests so um, maybe try to focus here and think about what we're doing so when you have one of these word problems you want to try and sketch the situation so it says that you're standing uh, near a building here um, you're a hundred feet away and you're looking at the top of the building Okay, so let's say you're down here. Now hopefully the building makes a uh, 90 degree angle with the ground, probably, unless it's the Leaning Tower of Pisa or something like that. And it says you're standing 100 feet away from the building. And it says you measure the angle of elevation. So the angle of elevation is when you have your eye like this, and you're looking across, and you look up at the top of something. So it's your line of sight and then up. That's the angle of elevation. Okay? And maybe we'll talk about an angle of depression later. The angle of depression is kind of the line of sight and then looking down. But people have a tendency to draw that wrong. Um, because if you're looking off a cliff down at something, people tend to draw the triangle down here to the cliff. And I tell people draw the triangle in the sky for the angle of depression, because the angle of depression is from your line of sight looking down, it would be up here. I guess I'm just going to put that in these notes. Okay, this would be the angle of depression looking down, not over here. So, now if we look at that, so that, looking up the building was uh, 78 degrees. And it says estimate the height of the building. So now you draw the picture, you fill in the information, you fill in what you're trying to find, and then you set up a trig, fun trig uh, function. So what do we have here? We have this angle, this is opposite, and this is adjacent. So opposite adjacent is tangent. So we'd say the tangent of 78 degrees equals the opposite over the adjacent, which is 100 feet. So if we multiply both sides times 100 feet, we get that the height of the building is 100 times the tangent of 78 degrees feet. Now next year you use a calculator and you'll do that, maybe on your Alex or something, but in our class we would just have our students on our tests, we would just leave the answer like that. We just wanted to make sure you knew how to set it up. We didn't want to use calculators because then you can use the calculators to do the quadratic formula and other stuff like that. And so we kind of stayed away from calculators in our class and figured you could learn about them next year. Okay, so here we have another one. So we have a driveway rising up uh, 12 feet, so at an angle of 3.5 degrees. So it's a pretty small angle there, something like this. And your picture doesn't have to be perfect as long as you get the things in the right place. The driveway rises 12 feet at an angle of 3.5 degrees. Estimate the length of the driveway. So this would kind of be underground. I guess this would be like a little bit of a hill going up here. It rises 12 feet over the course of the driveway. So now we want to look at the things we have here. So we have opposite and hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So we have the sine of 3.5 degrees equals the opposite over the length of the driveway. Okay, so what we're going to do here is you could think about it, we're going to get rid of the, we want d, the variable, to not be in the denominator, so we're going to multiply both sides by d. So if we multiply both sides by d, we would get this, and then we're trying to get d by itself, so we would divide both sides by the sine of 3.5. Now, if you think about it, you just wanted to memorize a little bit easier way to do that you if the variables in the denominator you're basically just switching these two things if you look at what we ended up with over here we ended up with d equals 12 over the sine of 3.5 so um, 
and then don't forget the feet. All right. Okay, so real quickly, uh, it's kind of just asking you about uh, some of these angles that we did uh, before. So the sine of 30 degrees. Um, you could. I don't really want you to look up there. I kind of want you to think about it, see if you memorized it. So um, one of the things you could do, well, that was a half. And this was uh, root 3 over 2. And this was root 3 over 3. And this one was a little bit easier, the 45, because the sine and the cosine were equal, uh, like that, and then the tangent was 1. So hopefully you can memorize those. Now, if you're not sure, what you can do is you can just draw a triangle. So if you draw a 30, 60, 90 triangle like that, and then if you let this side be 1, and the hypotenuse be 2, and the long leg be root 3, and then you could actually just figure it out. So you could do that for any of these, actually. So sine is opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be root 3 over 2. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be 1 over 2. And tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be root 3 over 1. So that was kind of fast, but uh, it's not a big deal right now. So now we get to this review question, and this is kind of a big deal because uh, this is a test question. So I already did one of these for you the other day. There was probably a, maybe a warm-up on the next notes that you did. Um, and now here's another one. So for some reason, this uh, kind of gives some of our students a hard time. So we're really trying to go over it a bunch of times here. So the hypotenuse is three more than twice the shorter leg. The longer leg is triple the shorter leg. So both of these references to the shorter leg let us know that we're going to use that is our variable. So our, our variable is going to be x for the shorter leg. Now let's go back to the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is three more than twice the shorter leg. So twice the shorter leg, three more than that. And the longer leg is triple the shorter leg. So that's going to be like this. Okay, so I'm going to do this kind of fast. You can pause it and because uh, we've already done it before. It's a review question. Um, so now we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to have x squared plus 3x squared equals 2x plus 3 squared. Okay, so this is going to be x squared plus, that's going to be, because it's times, I can just distribute that. So it's going to be 9x squared. Now I need to square this out. Now hopefully a lot of you have the pattern memorized. When you square a binomial, you square this, you multiply those together and double it, and you square that. But if you don't, uh, you can come over here, and anytime you're multiplying uh, binomials, or actually uh, other things as well, binomials times trinomials and stuff like that, next year when you're multiplying polynomials, uh, we can set this up. So there's the 2x plus 3 and 2x plus 3. So this is 4x squared, this is positive 6x, 6x, and this is 9. So you, these two normally combine. So back to the pattern I was talking about, if you square this, you get 4x squared. If you multiply those together, you get 6x, and if you double that, you get 12x, and if you square that, you get 9. And that could be a little bit fast for you, but it, it's kind of supposed to be reviewed. That's algebra 1. So if we add these together, we'd have uh, 10x squared, and if we subtract 4x squared from both sides, 10x squared minus 4x squared is 6x squared, and then we could... Uh, subtract the 12 and the 9 over and set it equal to 0. Okay, so we can take this whole thing, because we're solving, because there's an equal sign, we could divide the whole thing by 3. And that's going to give us smaller numbers and make it easier. But we can only do that because we're solving. If we are factoring, we can't just factor out a 3 and throw it away. We would need to keep it. But... Uh, this doesn't look like it factors, so I'm going to go straight to the quadratic formula. So x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You can sing that to the Pop Goes the Weasel song if you want to, if that helps you. Okay, so... Uh, simplifying some of this stuff in here, negative 4 squared is 16, negative times negative is positive, 
this is going to be 8 times 3 is 24. So that's going to be root 40, which is root 4 times root 10. So that's 2 root 10. So now um, this is going to be 4 plus or minus 2 root 10 over 4. Now the way we like to do it in person is we like to split that up into 2, so we put uh, 4 over 4. Uh, but uh, on, the, on the canvas, I think what we've been doing is just reducing it here. So there, these are basically three terms, and we can divide them all by 2. So that would be 2 plus or minus root 10 over 2. Okay, now like I said, in person what we would do is put 2 over 2 is 1, and then plus or minus root 10 over 2. So that's what you'll see on our answer key uh, is that. But I think, I'm trying to think on the canvas, I think we're doing this. Okay, so we got a bunch of review stuff here. So this is kind of uh, up to you where you are with this stuff. So hopefully you could just pause it and knock these out as practice. But um, I'm going to try to go a little bit uh, quickly here. So this one is in point slope form. So I'm going to take the opposite of that and the opposite of this. So negative 3, uh, 2, negative 3, 2. So right there, and the slope is uh, negative 1 third. So down 1 to the right 3, or up 1 to the left 3. All right, so there's our first line there, and then um, let's see, our next line here is just y equals 6, so um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's just a horizontal line. There, and... Uh, x equals negative 3, that's a vertical line here. And finally this last one, that's in standard form. So when we have lines in standard form, we like to look for the x and y intercept if we can. So if we plug in 0 for x and divide by 3, we get 9 for y. And if we plug 0 in for y and divide by 9, we get 3 for x. So 0, 9 is uh, up here, and 3, 0 is right here. So that's going down 9 uh, over 3, so we know that that slope is negative 3. So I can use that. Now I can see that that makes a shape, so I don't need to keep going with my dots across there. I don't really need that last green line to go all the way across. I missed that. It looks a little... Well, I guess that's all right. So if we focus on our shape here, that. Okay, so the area, there's a couple different ways we could uh, do that. Um, how do we want to do that? So that's a, actually, so if you look at that, if you're not sure what it looks like at first, one of the things you can do is try to look at something from a different point of view, which actually works well in life as well. Um, so if you turn this, hopefully now, looking at it from this angle, uh, you can tell what that is. That's a uh, kite. So um, to find the area of that, we could take the product of the diagonals, um, half the product of the diagonals. So if you look across here, Actually, this is a right isosceles triangle. 
and so the sides are 4, so the hypotenuse would be 4 radical 2. You just did special right triangles the other day. So that should help with that. And then this other one, this is actually 6. If you did 6 and 6, that would get you that other diagonal across there. So that would be 6 root 2. So if we do that, uh, the root 2 times the root 2 will just be 2. Think about it, root 2 times root 2 is root 4, and square root of 4 is 2. Anytime you multiply a square root times itself, you just get the number back. So that's 2 times a half, that cancels out. So now we have 4 times 6, so that's just going to be 24 units squared. Now, if that's a little bit rough for you, you could also look at this square right here. So the square is uh, 6 by 6. So 6 uh, squared actually, so 36. And then if you look at these two triangles here, or you could put them together as a rectangle, that's uh, 2 and 6, and if you put this one right next to it, you get a rectangle that's 2 by 6. So if you subtract that 12, you also get 24. So just another way to do that. Alright, the perimeter here, if we look, uh, this side up here is 4, and this side over here is 4 also, so that's 8. So the perimeter so far is 8, and now if we want this diagonal right here, and actually we realize that both these diagonals are going to be equal hopefully because it's 2 and 6, so you have uh, 2 squared plus 6 squared equals c squared, so that's going to be 4 and 36, which is 40. And we just had that uh, somewhere else, so that's going to be root 4 and root 10, which is 2 root 10. But remember, we have two of those, 2 times 2 root 10, just like this was 2 times 4. This is 2, because this is 2 root 10, and that's 2 root 10. So the final answer for the perimeter is going to be 8 plus 4 root 10 units. Okay, and this down here, if, you, if you're already really good at this, uh, it's, it's not that big of a deal, so you probably uh, don't need to keep going. I would assume that most of these are pretty easy, uh, so I'll focus on the hardest one. Or We can come back if you need to, come back to office hours, uh, to either of us, and we can uh, help you. So the first thing you do on these reflection questions is you plot the points. So negative 9, 2 is right here, and uh, that's u, and then v is negative 3, 2, which is right there, and w is negative 6, negative 1. So that seems pretty familiar. Maybe we had that in a different set of notes, the same question. Um, and we just copied this from there to here. Okay, so I guess that looks all right. So I'm going to focus on uh, the middle there. So the line y equals x. I guess we could do them all. You want to do them all? I'll, I'll assume that that one maybe you can do. That's going to overlap though. But anyway, let's do. I'm going to do these two. So if you need help, come back. So we're reflecting over the line uh, y equals x. So that means that we need to go directly across here. So this is a little bit tricky. So if we go directly across, we're going to kind of go directly across each of these squares. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a half uh, direct till we get to the line here. So there's the half, and then I need to go 5 more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's going to be here. Okay, so that's u double prime. Now here w is 1, 2, and a half. So there's a half, 1, 2, so there's w double prime. And v is also 2 and a half, so uh, if you do that, v double prime is right there. Okay. All right, and then we need to write those coordinates down. So this is uh, 2, negative 9, 
and v was uh, 2, negative 3, and w is negative 1, uh, negative 6. Okay. All right, I'm going to do one more. y equals 4, so that's a 1, 2, 3, 4. That's up here. So if you sketch that line in there. This is actually a little bit easier, so now we're just going to go up across here. So u was 2 below that green dotted line, so we're just going to go 2 above. So that's going to be u triple prime. Same thing here, v triple prime. And this one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's going to be W triple prime. So probably should use my ruler, but okay. So there's that one. I need to get those points. So that's uh, also negative 9. And then that's uh, 6. And this is still negative 3. Uh, also 6, and this is negative 6, 9, okay. These notes are already on the long side, so I just don't want to keep going on all of that. Okay, so perform the following rotations. So... Again, we uh, need the original first, so A is negative 5, 1. Sorry these are on the long side, but this is review, so if you don't need the review, um, figure something out there. Just fast forward and write, write it down, maybe. Uh, negative 2, 4 is up there. That's B. And C is uh, negative 2, 0. Okay, so there we go. So that's the original, and just calling in the original. I mean, you should be able to tell because the, the, the original doesn't have the primes on it, but all right, so that's the original. Now, <clears throat> this first one says a 90 degree clockwise rotation about negative 2, negative 3. <clears throat> okay, so what we want to do, 90 degrees clockwise is the way a clock moves, and a clock moves to the right here. So if we turn our page, 90 degrees would be one turn. That would be a 90 degree angle. And what we want to do is we want to look at where is the point compared to the center of rotation. So I'm just going to do C because it's the closest. So that's 3 to the right of the center. So if I come back and I go 3 to the right of the center, that's going to be right here. So that's C prime. Okay, so now let's do B. So if you do it again, you turn it 90 degrees and you say, where is B compared to the rotation, the center of rotation. Now you could count it all the way from there, but you could also just count it from C and say, hey, it's 4 to the right of C. So if we come back and we go 4 to the right of C, that's going to be over here. So that's going to be B prime. Okay, and then finally to get A, if we turn it back, we can get A relative to B or C. So we could go to C and we'd say, okay, where is A? It's 1 to the right and 3 up. Or we could go to the center and say it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right and 3 up. Either way. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. So that's where the new A is. Okay. So that's where we would end up. And A is at uh, 2, A prime is at 2, 0. And B prime is at 4, negative 3. And C prime is at 1, negative 3. All right. Now, if we go 
um, 180 degrees clockwise about negative 5, 1. So negative 5, 1 is, is A. So if we're going to rotate A about A, it's not going to move. So A double prime is going to be the exact same as A because that's what we're spinning the triangle around. So that's going to be right there. Now, so that's going to be A prime. Now, 180 would be two 90s or upside down. So we turn it upside down and we look at where is B compared to, to the center of rotation. Remember, the center of rotation was A. So B is 3 to the left and 3 down. So you got to remember, remember that. 3 to the left, 3 down. 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 So that is, oh, I should have put double prime there. That's B double prime. Okay, so now we do it again. 180 is upside down. It doesn't matter whether you go clockwise or counterclockwise because it's going to be upside down either way. So now if you look at, uh, we got B, where is C? C is 3 to the left, up 1. 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 So there's C double prime. Okay. So that's right here. And we can get those coordinates. So uh, B double prime is, where is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, negative 2. Negative 8, negative 2, almost. Negative 8, negative 2. And then this is going to be negative 8, uh, positive 2. Okay. And I think 270, hopefully you can do 270, especially because it's about the origin. So you're just going to compare it to, so 270 counterclockwise, 1, 2, 3, which, by the way, 270 counterclockwise, we could have just done 90 clockwise. So then you're going to look at the original and compare it. Always compare to the original. And then where is, so where is A? A is 1 to the right and up 5. So you come back, 1 to the right, up 5. It's going to be right here. So that's going to be A triple prime. And that was uh, 1, 5. And then hopefully you can do the other two up there. Okay, that was a long one. I'm going to wrap it up. Have a good day. It's about that time.